Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns, your host here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover any sort of activities in the library world or in Nebraska that may be of interest to Nebraska librarians and staff across the state. Um, we do these sessions every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. They're free. They last about an hour, depending on how long we go. Um, and they are recorded, as this one is being, so if you have not been able to attend a live session, you can always watch all the recordings on our website. Um, we do a mixture of different kinds of presentations here, introductions to things, interviews, book reviews, daily training sessions, whatever catches our attention, I guess. Um, and we sometimes have guest speakers, and we sometimes have our own speakers here for commission, as we have today. Um, today we have Michael Sowers, who's the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Libra Library Commission, and he's going to tell us all about feeds. Feeds? How to get fed. You're hungry? Fed. Yeah, actually I am. But that's <laughs> <laughs> that is your lunch yeah. sitting back there, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> all right. I guess that's my kid? Yeah. That's my kid. All right. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Krista mentioned, my name is Michael. I'm the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Commission. Um, and we're here to talk about RSS. Um, some of you have probably heard of RSS before. Um, we are kind of got some new initiatives going on here at the Commission, trying to encourage a lot of use of RSS. So we figured it's a good time to, to have a refresher for some folks. For some of you, this is still pretty a new topic, so um, it's out there. So what I'm going to do basically is give you kind of the, the airplane 30,000 feet view of, of RSS here today. Um, so if you have questions as we're going along, uh, like we said, Chris is monitoring that on a, on a laptop mm -hmm. here, so just uh, send those in as we go along, and I, I can assure you that she has no problem interrupting me. So, yeah, um, totally. Yeah. So um, I've got about an hour's worth of material, but completely flexible. Uh, we've got time for questions, so that's, that's not a problem. But like I said, um, I normally teach two, two three-hour workshops on RSS, a, a basic and advanced. So this is kind of the, the one-hour version, so I want to stress that this is, is, this is a very big overview of the topic. So what is RSS? Well, RSS is an acronym, you can probably guess. Um, depending on, yeah, we love our acronyms in technology, don't we? And, and libraries are not immune to that. OPAC, anyone? Anyways, so RSS, like I said, is an acronym. If you really get into the history of RSS, which we'll do just a little bit, um, and, and get into some of the things, it could be really simple syndication, rich site summary, RDF site summary. That third one's actually my favorite because it's an acronym that contains another acronym. <laughs> Isn't that fun? But really, most people, if you, if you ask or if they even care, really simple syndication is kind of the definition today that we use. Um, it is an XML-based language for syndicating content on the Internet. So... Um, Chris, I don't know, I'll ask you here. Do you remember uh, Windows 95? Yeah. Okay. And Windows 95 had uh, something called channels, where you could subscribe to content on your desktop. It was called push technology. Do you oh, remember this? channels, yes. Ah, it failed miserably. Okay. Because, <laughs> I mean, mainly it was, it was kind of two reasons. Um, one, bandwidth didn't really exist at the time. Um, it was, oh, it was yeah. really, it was bandwidth intensive, and you're on dial-up modems, 14.4, 28.8, remember those? Yeah. Um, bells and whistles, right. quite literally. Um, and the other reason was is that it was, with, in combination with that bandwidth, it was that constant stuff was being sent to you. It was a kind of very early form of syndication, the idea that you would subscribe to content. Well, RSS has kind of come along to, to, as an improvement to that and something that really worked. Um, RSS did actually start back in 1997. I don't want to spend too much time on, on this chart here. It'll, it'll be in the recording and, and the PowerPoints you can download if you want. Um, but the idea here is that it, it, RSS has a very long and tortured development history. And the problem is, is each of these blue lines is kind of another version of RSS. But if, if you see here, you've got back in 2000, there was something called RSS 0.91. But at the same time, there was something called RSS 1.0. Um, notice those are on different lines. They were different versions of the same technology. Version 1.0 was not an upgrade to point nine one. It was a concurrent technology under the same name. Two different groups doing the yes. same thing. Yes, two different groups kind of trying to accomplish the same thing. And, and as we move up here towards kind of the, the newer end of things, you will see that we have uh, different versions. One RSS 1 still exists. RSS 2 still exists. 
Um, then there's something called Atom, which ended up coming out, uh, which is does the same thing but has a different name. Thank you very much. Um, so actually, let me back up here just a second. I, I don't want to stress this too much. Just want to say that you know, long and tortured history. You can read narratives about this. You find some some books about RSS that are out there. The point here is that there are different versions, but today the technology you as a user use to read RSS or Atom or feeds being the more general term really doesn't care which version is, is being used. It's kind of become transparent from the user's uh, perspective. If you start to publish your own RSS feeds, then it may get a little more complicated as to which version you want to use, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit as we're going along here today. So, how does RSS work? Um, this slide is not nearly as complicated as it looks, uh -huh. um, but it did take me quite a while to actually put it together because I had to sit down and try to figure this out. Okay, Let's we'll start over on the left-hand side here. You have kind of this circular loop for the information provider. Now, the information provider could be a blog, could be a search engine, could be a podcaster, any piece of content that they're making available via RSS. They create the content. Okay? So let's say it's a blog post. Keep it nice and simple. They write, I write a blog post on my blog, and then some code gets added to that that was the actual code that makes RSS work. Kind of looks like HTML, very similar to that. I have a slide showing you an example. Um, that code is added, and in my case, my blogging software does that for me automatically. So it saves a lot of work. And then that gets put on a web server just like any old web page would be. It's, it's yet another piece of content on the web. And me as the blogger, as the information provider in this case, this circle just kind of continues. I create content, the code gets added, it gets put on the web server. I create content, the code gets added, it gets put on the web server. And as I add more content, more code is added, and this file just gets longer and longer. Okay? It's, it's the same file that keeps getting updated every time. So me, my end, that just sits there. Then comes the user. Okay. Now, once that that content is on the web server in the RSS format, it gets a URL, just like any web page would. That person will subscribe to that URL using something called a feed reader or an aggregator, which I'll, I'll get into more details in a few minutes. What that aggregator is going to do is start this little process loop here. It's going to check for updates against the content on the web server, and if it finds any new content, it will download that content. And then maybe an hour later or a day later, it'll check for new content. And if it finds any, it will download the new content. And this will just kind of circle around and circle around and circle around. And then the person who is subscribed to it will read the new content as it comes in in their service or their software. Right? So it's kind of this two-stage process, one stage for the information provider, one stage for the information receiver, with a lot of that work for the receiver being done automatically by some software or service which is checking that that content um, that was sent by the provider. So I don't know if there are any uh, questions about that. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, keep an eye on that. Is there, we're, we're checking here. Just want to make sure because this is kind of that. Nope, so, no, no questions. Okay, good. You, if you got one, another one run, you run into one, please, you know, by all means, uh, send that in. Okay. <clears throat> what are the implications of this process? Uh, the, there, there's kind of four of them as I see it. One is, is all this different information is received in a single location. Okay. Let's again use blogs as an example. I read a lot of blogs. Krista, I know you read a lot of blogs. Yeah. Okay, almost too many. Okay. <laughs> and before RSS, if you wanted to read a blog, how would you remember that you had to go read that blog again? I just would remember. Well, you bookmark it. To. Oh, well, you yes. bookmark it, right? So you'd have this folder in your bookmarks yes. called blogs. And every day, you would go back to see if there was new content posted. Well, the problem is, is not everybody posts new content every day. Or some blogs post new content every few minutes. Mm -hmm. And so checking became annoying, and then eventually you forgot, and you have to go to the next bookmark, and the next bookmark, and then one day you're like, oh, I don't remember. It's just annoying. It's not efficient by any stretch of the imagination, because you have to go to each source one at a time. Okay? RSS will allow you to take all those sources and bring them into one location. So you go to one place and you read all that content you subscribe to via RSS. The information is received quickly. The fact that the software you're going to use takes over the process for checking new content means that 
the moment there is new content, you pretty much have access to it, and you don't have to remember to go back and check it. The third one, which is great for readers, but some information providers kind of get a little frustrated by this, is that the need to visit the original originating website is reduced. So if you subscribe to the content from my blog, and I've spent hours, if not days, weeks, or months, designing the look of my website, you subscribe to that content, you don't see it. You don't care what my website looks like. You just want the content that I published on my website. Okay? I could go into an all long discussion just on that issue. But from a reader's perspective, you don't have to keep going back to the website. This stuff just comes to you. And finally, I think what is the big one, is the possible end of this. Okay. I'm a big yeah. person, I've talked about this before, something called Inbox Zero. You can look it up, it was written by uh, a gentleman by the name of Merlin Mann. I tend to not leave things in my inbox. I think when I came down here, I had four things in my inbox. Krista, you want to guess how many things are in your inbox? No. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I am uh, bad, Probably bad. not 99,999. No, no, okay. not that many, not at all. But mailing lists, how many mailing lists are you on? I, I, rhetorical question, don't yeah. answer. I'm on plenty, but I try not to be anymore. My inbox is for things who are really people who are trying to specifically talk to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. If those mailing lists I can get via RSS where they're, they're, they're broadcasting to lots of people, I find it a little easier to deal with. And here's why. It's, and I hate to say it, it's a paradigm shift. Okay. Just don't ask me to spell it. <laughs> Okay, so here's the email model. The email model is everything comes in, okay, and you have to delete everything you don't want to keep. Yes. Okay. How much of your email do you think you actually delete versus you keep? Which is more? Think you delete more than you keep? Oh, um, That's probably. Not, probably. Or okay. 50, 50, probably, 50. especially if you're on a lot of mailing lists. Okay. You know. Now, Chris may not be. I do a lot of work via email. Yes. Okay. Too, so. Librarian. Like that, well, so. you know, let's say you, you, you subscribe to uh, 10 mailing lists. Most yeah. of that stuff you don't, you know, you like read, okay, I don't need to keep that, I don't need to keep that. You delete, you delete, 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 delete. Mm -hmm. And then you keep the things you want. And the problem is, is that's, what, that's why your inbox gets so full. Because you're keeping all that stuff. And some people are, are, are hesitant to delete things they don't really need anymore. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, but some people are like, well, I might need that in a few years, so I'm not going to delete it, okay? That's the email model. It's keep unless you delete, okay? The RSS model flips that on its head. It assumes that once you've read it, you don't want to keep it, okay, unless you just specifically say, I do want to keep it. So if an item comes in via email, you have to say, well, okay, I don't want that. I have to delete it. You have to take that active step. If something comes in via RSS, the moment you see it, the RSS service you're using assumes that you don't ever want to see it again unless you specifically take active steps to keep it. Mm -hmm. So when we, you know, we'll go live in a few minutes and I'll show you how many feeds I'm reading and, and you're going to see 500 unread items. Well, I can go through those 500 items in, in probably five minutes because I don't, I just, by default, I assume I'm not going to want to keep any of it. And there are ways I can email something to myself. Now it's in my inbox. <laughs> or the service I'm using, I'm going to say, you know what, keep this as new. Keep this here until I go back and deal with it later. Or I can actually go to the web page and bookmark it or things like that. It is a different way of looking at receiving information. And it, it is a little bit of a hurdle to get over. But I don't ever want to go back. Okay? If, if I can get something via RSS or via email, I will choose RSS every time. All right, so what does RSS look like? Here's the fun part. This is code. I'm not here to show you all of this. This is kind of here, but if you've ever done any HTML uh, work with web pages, this should look pretty much familiar to you. Okay? What I want to point out is just a couple of lines that are very important. Okay? And the first one I want to point out is right here. It's labeled last build dates. Now, this, this example is a little dated, that's okay. What's going to happen here is if you remember back to that process, that software I'm using is going to check for new content, let's say once an hour. Well, all it has to do is it has to read about nine lines into the code, and it's going to say basically when was the last time this feed was updated. 
And according to this piece of code, it was the 10th of May, 2007, at 7.34 in the morning. We've updated our blog since then. But we'll just... That's just when the screenshot... That's when the screenshot was made. So it gets this far and it says to itself, okay, well, the last time I checked the date was 10th of May, 2007. Has the date or time changed? No. The software can just stop and not have to read any more of the file and move along to the next thing. So it's very efficient. Okay. If it does say, hey, wait, well, you know, the last time I checked this is the 9th of May, so it's now the 10th of May, there must be something new, it goes down to read the first item. And each item will have a publication date. And it will say, is this item newer than the last time I checked? Yes, please download it. When it gets to the next item in the list, this example only has one, but you know, a real life example would have more than one. When it gets to the next one, it says, oh, well, that one I've already gotten, I don't need to do it anymore, it can stop reading the whole rest of the feed. And so it's that, there's how that bandwidth problem gets solved that that whole push technology in Windows 95 and Windows 98 had. This is very efficient, it's text-based, you can have graphics, things like that, but it's got that concept, that those dates and times built in, so it knows when stuff is new without reading a lot of content. Okay, so you're thinking, okay, this, this, this RSS speed thing sounds pretty good. How do I find them? Okay, well, there's a couple of ways. We're librarians. We like to search. <laughs> I like to search. I like to find little nooks and crannies of things. There are some different feed search engines out there. I've got a couple of examples. One here is called Feedmail. Feedmail specifically looks actually for feeds. Not necessarily blogs, but actual feeds. Search for the contents of feeds. So let's say, for example, uh, I know this is Nebraska. Uh, we have some quilters. Yes. Yes, including my wife. So I'm not picking on the quilters and my mother. So, uh, although my mother's not in Nebraska. Anyways, there's quilters out there. So let's say you're looking to subscribe to some feeds about quilting. You can go to Feedmill, search on quilting, and it will find you feeds that are available on quilting. There's quilting days, about.com's quilting page. Quilting is my passion. And actually, what I really find interesting, and, and you can almost do a whole session just on how Feedmill works, is it's got this topic significance thing over on the right, and these are slider bars. So what it does is it looks for other keywords that were in these results, and you can determine how important they need to be in your search results. It's kind of a very interesting interface. You can adjust those. You can adjust those. Okay? So, you know, if, if um, patterns are really important to you, you want quilting patterns, you can slide that up make it really important, and then your results will change based on how you set the importance level of these, of these sliders. I think that's pretty cool. It's kind of fun to play with. And then there's all this, uh, how surprising or well-known do you want your results to be? You know, how obscure uh, versus, you know, very well-known cultures, things like that. So anyways, it's a search engine. Go play with it. It's kind of fun. Okay. Um, your other option I find, which is a little less searching, more... Um, relationship based is blog roles. Um, blog roles are lists of blogs that other bloggers read. So this is the blog and it's a little out of date from the screenshot, but her blog does still exist called Library Web Chick. Yeah, you know, you know Library Web Chick. We know yes, Karen. Karen. Karen Coombs works for OCLC now. Yes, actually. she does. Uh, she's one of their Uber geeks. So yeah, cool. and then develop, research, Deve and research and development, yes. Yeah. Um, and what she's done on her blog is she's listed the blog she reads. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that I know Karen, I like what Karen posts on her blog, chances are I might be interested in some of the blogs she reads and some of the feeds she reads, so I can go through her list and find the feeds for those things. I have a blog role, um, sort of, on my website, so you can see, hey, I like what Michael writes, I might be interested in reading some of the stuff he reads. Huh? Um, your other option really is to look for the icon. Right. Now, the fun part of this is there, there are actually literally dozens of icons out there. All of these are examples. Now, I'll be honest, most of these are not used anymore. We've kind of come up with a standard, which is this one down here in the bottom right-hand corner. This is the icon. But look for orange. That, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's kind of the default color going on here. Um, you know, it's I, I like when, when all the blogs did everything differently, or excuse me, all the... the um, Browsers did everything differently. Well, early on, everybody had to create their own unique 
you know, icon, and, and there are variations. I even use some cutesy ones. You know, a little guy reading a newspaper with this icon on the newspaper, you know, things like that. But basically, this is that icon you're looking for, and chances are your browser already supports this icon. So if you get to a page that has a feed, you might see this icon in your address bar. Now what you do with it, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, just want to take a moment to talk about podcasts. Okay? Podcasts, we have one. We have one for the Nebraska Library Commission here um, called the Encompass Podcast. That podcasts are audio and video content delivered via RSS. That's really what it is. And it uses a code in RSS 2.0 called Enclosure. It's kind of like an attachment for an email. Okay. This is where I said a little earlier that the version doesn't matter until you're creating content. This is one example where creating content, the version is important. Yep, it has to be RSS version 2.0 because that's the only one that supports enclosures. Okay. Um, iPods are not necessary. I will stress this. We could do a whole other session <laughs> on, on podcasting. In fact, we've even talked about it. Yeah. Um, but what you can then do, just as an example here, you can use something like iTunes or many other programs, you do not have to use iTunes, to actually subscribe to RSS-based audio and video content. That's a podcast, okay, in a nutshell. So, just a quick example of some notable feeds. These are some of my favorites that I like to pay attention to. Over here on the left-hand side, we have uh, all library examples, uh, librarian.net, just an West blog, LIS News, Shifted Librarian, Jenny Levine's uh, blog, she's at ALA. My blog, I kind of view it as a favorite. <laughs> Pardon me, I kind of enjoy it. Um, Tame the Web from Michael Stevens at Dominican University. Uh, Unshelved, the comic strip, you can subscribe to that via RSS. Paper Cuts, this is just a great example of a blog at the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library. And to be honest, I'm not sure it's called Paper Cuts. I need to check that. Uh, well, we'll get we'll get back to you on that one. I, I, I seem to think in their last redesign, they, they might not have called it that anymore. Yeah. Um, over on the right left, some technical stuff. Gizmodo. Uh, there's another one called Engadget. These are you know gadgets and gizmos and technology. Security Now, Inside the Net, and This Week in Tech. Uh, these are all great uh, technology audio podcasts that I listen to on a very regular basis. Uh, Boingboing.net. Um, uh, random would be kind of the best way to to uh, describe the content of yeah. Boing Boing. Um, Google, geeky, geeky, but random. But very random. They'll do weird music. Uh, they'll, they'll do all sorts of things. Google News, ISBN searches, delicious Flickr. I'm going to show actually some live examples of most of these. And if I remember correctly, um, we will go live in just a second. So here's the next thing we need to talk about. I, I've been talking about the technology of RSS, kind of how it works, what it looks like. You want to read RSS, what do you need? You need something called an aggregator or a feed reader. Okay. This is the software or service that you use to actually get this content into a readable format. As it says here at the bottom, it's what you need to retrieve and read RSS feeds. Okay. Let me just go through some examples and talk about why you need one of these. If you don't have one of these and you want to bring an RSF file up on your screen, a couple of different things might happen. Um, if you're an Internet, 8, uh, Internet Explorer 8 user and you bring up a feed file, it will look something like this, which does have this wonderful little subscribe to this feed icon. <coughs> um, if you bring up an Atom file in IE8, it might look like this, which is yeah, it's readable. And both of these are readable, but... Um, you don't get the automated features. Um, if you're using Firefox and you bring it up, it's going to say, do you want to add a live bookmark? And you're like, huh? Explain that in a few minutes. Chrome. This kind of looks backwards, but Chrome will just give you the contents. It won't format it at all. It will look like a mess. People wonder, Chrome, if you're state of the art, why does it look like this? You don't have an answer. Okay. I love Chrome. I use the Chrome browser all the time. This is one of my pet peeves with Chrome. So, why do you need an aggregator? Well, it's going to make it readable, so, you know, it doesn't look like this. I mean, okay, technically that's readable, but really yeah, not so much. <laughs> and especially if you're using, like, an older browser, if you're still stuck in IE6, first of all, please upgrade. 
Um, second of all, you'll see something like this but with all the code mixed in. Like, great, thanks, that's a lot of help. It will gather the content of all of your feeds into a single location. It will check for updates automatically. It will notify you of new information. It will display only that new information for you by default. And it will most likely allow you to sort and save that, all that information. It's really big benefits. There are different types of aggregators. Let me just show a couple of examples uh, of those. Um, first of all, you can install something like FeedReader, which is a client. It's kind of like email. Uh, you actually install it on your machine. It's an individual piece of software. It only does feed reads. Not my favorite way of doing things because the last thing I need is a single piece of software that does only one thing. And by the way, I then need to be on that particular computer which has that piece of software in order to be able to read my content. Not exactly very mobile. If you are a Firefox user, you can do this in your browser. Um, they will, they have a technology called Live Bookmarks. And as you see here, I am on a page. It has an RSS feed, so I would click on that icon. It would say Add Live Bookmark. Excuse me, it will bring up that title. And then over my sidebar, I can open up my bookmarks, and I can see my RSS folder, and there's the Digital Photography School feed. And then there's all the things I haven't read yet. Uh, it's putting RSS into a bookmarks format. I don't find it very useful. This is my one big complaint about Firefox as a browser, is how it handles RSS feeds. If you are an IE8 user, this actually is pretty darn efficient. This is the one thing I like about Internet Explorer 8, is how it handles feeds. You get to that page that I showed you earlier where it says subscribe to this feed. You click on that. It'll say, okay, what do you want to call it? You put it in the feeds folder. Click subscribe, and then when you open your sidebar, you will get a list of the feeds you've subscribed to. And when you click on it, it will show you the items over here on the right that you haven't read yet. Really handy. It works quite well. The problem is, is you're still linked to this particular computer and that particular browser. Now, if you're the type of person who does all of your work on one computer at your desk, and you never do anything at home, you only do it at work, now, some people I know have one of these set up at home and one of these set up at work, and they have very different feeds subscribed to, so you don't accidentally read the home stuff while you're at work, and you yes. don't accidentally read the work stuff while you're at home. Exactly. I do that, that can work. I keep things separate so I don't get distracted by fun things or friends' blogs while uh -huh. I work. And when I'm at home, I don't get distracted by work. I'm not at <laughs> work anymore. I don't want to read those when I'm at home. So I uh, yeah, know. and unfortunately for me, not that simple. <laughs> I, I, I do try to avoid the purely fun stuff at work, honest. But sometimes the fun stuff is related to exactly what I'm doing at work because oh, I have unshelved. a really weird job. Yes, unshelved. It's a, it's a web comic about working in a public library. So, yeah, I think that's really important. And shelf check is another one. Shelf check, yeah, yes, also. Yeah, it's a very relevant comments that they let out. Yeah. Now, what I use is Google Reader. This is a web-based service. There's another one out there called um, Bloglines, which I have talked about a lot in the, in the past. You, Crystal uses that, she just said. Um, I've just recently switched to Google Reader for various reasons. I tend to prefer Google Reader now, but Bloglines is still a perfectly good solution. I, I want to stress that. I'm not dissing Bloglines by any stretch. Um, and so this solves all of my issues. It's web-based. I can get to it from any internet-connected device, including my phone. I can do it anywhere as long as I have an internet connection. Um, and I just, you know, the stuff I know I really should not be reading at work, I stick in a folder and I just never check that folder while I'm at work. Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of my um, methodology. Uh, I, I'm very good about that. If it's in that folder, I don't read it at work. So, let me go live. This is my note to say, now's the time to go live. <laughs> All right, so let me get to the right screen here. I have logged into Google Reader, and I'm going to do a little bit of a refresh here just to make sure that's up to date. Um, I could spend the next hour talking about Google Reader. not going to do that, um, but if you do have some specific questions, you, you can ask them. Um, I've also been very careful not to try to read any of my feeds this morning, so I'm behind already. So these numbers uh, might look kind of large to some of you, and I'm going to close some of this up here. Um, one of the things I do like about Google Reader is you can follow other Google Reader users. 
and things that they uh, pay attention to. So here's uh, Scott Childers over at UNL, and he has shared something uh, through uh, that, uh, through Google Reader, so I can kind of highlight the fact that, you know, he has shared that. And I say, he has shared a collection of blogs and websites on a particular topic, bundles. Well, bundles are new. This is a new feature. I've never heard of those. We'll have to do another session. <laughs> um, so now over here it says, I have one unread item from Scott. If I click on that, I can now read it, but notice that has disappeared from over here on the left. It assumes I've read it and I don't want to keep it. But I can star it, I can like it, I can share it, I can delete it, I can email it, I can say keep it unread, I can send it to another service, I can share it to the people who are following me with a note. But it assumes that I've read it, I no longer care, it's gone. And notice he posted this 24 minutes ago. Here's one from Andrew. I don't remember where Andrew is. I'm blanking. And here's seven useful resources to help you learn HTML5. Well, I've just read it, and it's just disappeared. But that's something I'm interested in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this post, and I'm going to say, you know what, keep this unread. Watch what happens. It now says you have unread, one unread item. So if I move along, it'll still be there the next time I come back. And then I can go ahead here and sort things into folders. These are now all different feeds that I'm subscribing to. You, you, start, you start following a lot of stuff, you really do organize. Absolutely. For example, Just like in your email, you don't publish oh, your email, do it here too. Exactly. Yeah. So for example, I have a books and authors folder. And under that, I have, here's one, the, the Shatskin files. He's an, an author I, I pay attention to. He writes a lot about ebooks and publishing. And I have one unread item. And I follow Tor.com, science fiction and fantasy publisher, four unread items. Okay. So if I was to click on Tor.com here, it will say, okay, here's the first one. Notice that just went down to three because I've read it. I go to the next item, it goes down to two. The next item goes down to one. The next item, it says, okay, you know, you've read everything. And this will update itself automatically every few minutes. Or if I really want, I can say, you know what, refresh now, because I'm impatient. It's kind of like checking your <laughs> inbox. How many of you admit it? Say, check new mail, check new mail, check new mail. I can just click subscriptions. It says refreshing, and my numbers will automatically update. Really, really handy. So let me talk for a few minutes about how to uh, find some feeds and subscribe to them. And I will use Google Reader as my example. Your actual subscription instructions will vary depending on which re reader or aggregator you're using. Okay? So this is a general process I want to talk about here. So let's say, for example, you find this wonderful blog called The Traveling Librarian. Okay, that's my blog. Um, you, and there's Shelf Check. Yeah, and there's Shelf Check, another great web comic about libraries. So you look for the orange RSS icon. And because we've kind of scrunched my screen here, here's one. Subscribe. Notice it's also up here. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, if you use the one in your address bar, you generally want to do a little setup where you integrate. I've told my browser on my desktop, on my office, and at home that if I click on that icon, please use Google Reader. In this case, this is one of more of our staff computers. I haven't done that. So really what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to right-click on that icon and say copy link. And I'm going to go back over to Google Reader, click add a subscription, paste that URL in there, click Add, and it might actually say I'm already subscribed. <laughs> in fact, since nothing happened, oh, there we go, and it says, you have subscribed to it. Yay! And I have no unread items. Actually, I think it's because I'm already subscribed. Okay? But I can view them. And if I click on View, here's some stuff that I've posted to that feed, including some photos. There's the comic book, some other photos. I've actually done some magic things to my feed to make different sources come into one actual long feed. Um, Mildred Public Library, I want to mention them. Their website went live this morning. Yay, Hildreth. And they're part of a project that I also kind of want to plug here called Nebraska Libraries on the Web that we're working with uh, in the commission. And um, because they're with that project, they automatically have feeds. Their website is a blog. And if I kind of scroll over to right here a little bit and look right up here, there is that RSS icon again. So I right click, copy link, go 
back to my Google Reader, add a subscription, paste it, click Add, and give it a sec, and it will say, you are now subscribed to the Hilders Public Library feed. It's usually a little faster than this. There we go. Okay. You have subscribed to it. Yep, I have subscribed to it. And if I want, I can put it in my Nebraska folder. There we go. And now it will show up in the appropriate folder. And notice over here on the left, it now says Nebraska, and there's Hilders Public Library. Really, really handy. Um, Flickr, I didn't log in, I really should have, but let's just do a quick search on libraries, or library, and I want to know anytime anybody posts a photo to Flickr with the word library in it, uh -huh. that's a lot, Yeah. but, but anyway. it's an example, <laughs> you scroll all the way to the bottom, and there is no RSS link. That's because I think you have to be logged in and have a Flickr account to get the RSS feed for a search result. So if you give me one second here, I will do that because I remember my password. I can remember my username. Please don't remember that. Okay, so let's search library again. Scroll down, and Maybe you gotta go over. yeah, where'd it go? Okay, well, you know what? I, I can I can show you. It still does work in another way. Let's say you find this guy named the Travel Librarian. He takes really great photos. Okay. Oh, by the way, he takes a lot of photos. Um, and I want to know whenever he posts a new photo. That I can do if I scroll all the way down. There's our RSS feed. I think for a search, you have to go through another process, and I forgot. But I can subscribe to his latest photos. Okay. Again, right-click, copy, go back over to Google Reader, paste it right in, you're subscribed. Wikipedia does also have uh, RSS feeds. So let's say you are interested in the uh, 2008 Japanese Grand Prix. I don't know why, it's just there. In this case, it's going to be a little different. You do... Wikipedia, I found out uh, as I was uh, looking at this this morning, you have to use the link in your browser. They don't have an actual icon on the page like the previous examples have done. So in theory, I would click on this and it would say, um, okay, what do you want to do? I'm in Firefox and I can say, you know what, I want to subscribe via Google. So I change that to Google. I click subscribe now. And it says, okay, I want to add it to Google Reader. And then since I'm already logged in, it will do that for me. So that's kind of what that process looks like. Um, what are, I think I have three more quick examples here. Uh, and then I think we'll just generally open it up for questions. Uh, Twitter search. Okay, we've talked about Twitter in many other presentations. You know Chris and I are fans of Twitter. In fact, as you may have noticed from the intro slides, uh, prior to recording, we've set up a... Twitter hashtag for that, and I think we've been getting a couple of people. Yes, people and so you're thinking to yourself, okay, I want to know whenever somebody talks about Encompass Live. But you know what? I really don't want to sign up for a Twitter account. You know, I'm just not convinced. Okay? And you know, if we can't convince you, I don't know who can. <laughs> but I'm just not convinced. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to search for Encompass. No. No, NCOMP Live. NCOMP Live. Right. Okay. Had we set it up last week. So yeah. we're still working. <laughs> okay, two weeks, no, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay, so I'm going to do that search. And cross my fingers that this all works. And hey, there's you, a couple of you who have been tweeting so far today. Great. Over here on the right, feed for this query. So what am I going to do? I'm going to copy link location. I'm going to go over here and add my subscription. Click Add, and what we should get after a few moments, and there we go, NCOMP Live Twitter, and here is the posts that are coming in. So, handy dandy. You can do this with Google News. So, um, Old Breath, Alaska. Okay. and because I live in Hillbreath, I kind of want to know what's going on. 
I want to just get a heads up. I did my search, and if I scroll on down here, here is the RSS feed for that search. Okay. Now, yes? So you never know where that little RSS icon is going to be. It's basically you have to scroll up and down until you figure out yeah. where to put it. Kind of. I mean, I, I really, though, if you're using a current browser, you're going to look up here in your address yeah. bar. Mm -hmm. um, it's just using it in your address bar, it's going to be a little different depending on your browser. You know, if you're using Chrome, Firefox, or IE, uh, you're going to want to set it up so that it works with a particular service you're using, whether it's blog lines or Google Readers or the built-in feature. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm really kind of doing it a little more manually than I would do it in real life. Yeah. Okay. But Chris's point is completely obvious, uh, completely correct, in that if you are looking for the links on the actual web page itself, it could be off to the side, it could be at the bottom, it could be at the top, it could be on the left, it could be on the right. Just kind of look for it. Sometimes we'll have the word RSS. Sometimes we'll just have the icon. Sometimes it'll say feed. Sometimes it'll say subscribe. Keep an eye out. It's there. Huh? Um, excuse me for just a sec. Okay. Last example I want to show, and then I think we're going to kind of open it up for questions here. Uh, PubMed. Okay. This one is, I, I don't know if this applies necessarily to anybody here, but, you know, PubMed is a great medical resource from the government, peer-reviewed stuff, wonderful, wonderful things, and you can subscribe to the content. So here's the example I'd like to give. Okay? You're in, on a campus, and you have a, um, you know, medical school. Okay? And so you know that you've got some professors that are researching particular topics. And let's say one of the research topics is gout, something I know a little too well, unfortunately. <laughs> and so I'm the librarian. I say, hey, we've got Professor X over there, and, and he's um, uh, researching gout. So I'm going to set up a search here in PubMed on gout. I'm going to do that little search, and it will come up. And then I can subscribe to that RSS feed right here. So again, I'm going to go ahead and do my copy. I'm going to go back to my Google Reader. I'm going to add that subscription. Paste that in there and click Add. And I now have a PubMed search feed for gout. And whenever new content appears, I will be notified. So what you do is we'll bring up some content here. Okay. And then you as a librarian kind of read these and go, oh, well, okay. Well, that just kind of mentions gout. All right, okay. But now this one is like the latest study on gout treatments. Mm -hmm. That professor might want to know about it. Mm -hmm. So I could literally, I could, I could bring up, I can actually, let's see if I click here, I can actually bring that web page up. Okay? And I could say, hey, you know, all right. And then I could send the URL this way. Or I could go back to Google Reader and just say, you know what, email to Professor X. <laughs> Prof X, yes, I know, X-Men joke, sorry, <laughs> at xmen.com. And send that off to Professor X and add a little note here that says, found this great article for you, thought you might be interested. Okay? We will press your faculty. Totally. <laughs> or I any mean, of your patrons. Or any of your patrons. Um, I mean, yeah. I, in public libraries, I, I, I talk about, you know, you know you've got those business people that come into the library for research purposes all the time. Yes, you could tell, teach them how to set this up, but you could set it up, and then you can send them the information. The best one, let's talk advocacy for just a moment. Oh, ah, yeah. Your mayor? Mm -hmm. Find out what your mayor is interested in. Okay? Even if it's not mayor-related. You know, he might be into ATVs or hunting or something. Find yourself a good search engine that has RSS feeds attached to it. Set up that search, subscribe to the results, you find something new, send it off to the mayor. Make yourself indispensable. Yeah. Okay? Say, you know what, I know what you're into, and I'm a librarian, and I can find stuff, and so when it comes to budget, the mayor's hey. going to think, hey, the Don't librarian, the librarian. Yes, the librarian sends me all sorts of good stuff, I should probably cut their funds. <laughs> it's a theory. It's, it's a very good But theory. it's a very good yeah. theory. You know, it is something to think about. So that's pretty much it. Now, I could do a whole other presentation on you want to publish feeds. 
but I think that would be a, a whole other session. <laughs> like at this point, really, what I want to stress is, is, yeah, this is this is why should you care about RSS? How do you actually subscribe to RSS content, um, and and what sort of uses uh, can you get from it? Um, so I'm actually going to cancel this email, and I'm also going to unsubscribe from this feed here, just to kind of give you an idea of how that works. And say, yes, if your interests change that. or something, you, you're not locked into these things. Right. Oh yeah, totally. And there I just unsubscribed from it, and that accidentally came up. Um, and Google Reader itself will do lots of other things. Um, you know, if you got questions, send them in. I'm just going to vamp for a couple of minutes here. Yeah, feel free but, to, um, if you want to raise your hand for a question, or just type right into the question section in the GoToWebinar interface. Or if you're over there on Twitter, send a question or a comment through Twitter. I'm monitoring that as well. Just add the hashtag um, pound and comp live, yeah. and then I'll see it. Um, you can do things here. For example, here are things that um, I've shared out to people, so people who are following me. These are the things that I've shared recently. Um, I, here are the things I've starred, so I might want to get back to them um, a little later. Um, it will actually keep statistics on how many things you read and how fast you read them and, and, and all sorts of, yeah, I, I, I don't look at that much, actually. Too. There's a browse, um, there is find other feeds like this one, I mean, there, there, there's all sorts of features in here, and, and um, Bloglines also uh, does uh, have that. Um, okay, and we have a question. <clears throat> yeah. um, it's actually two questions. Sorry. Two questions, okay. Um, when, this is uh, Julie Marlowe asks, when you follow someone, are you just following their blog, or do you have the ability to see all of their subscriptions? Or is there a way to share your subscriptions um, slash make them public? Okay. Let me, let me ask the, the second part. Uh, is that question one? Or is that the two questions? Two questions. That's the two uh -huh. questions. Okay, let me ask the second question, answer the second question first. In Google Reader, you can set what your what you subscribe to is either public or private. Okay, so most of what I've subscribed to is public. So you can, through a way that is just completely blanking on me at the moment, you can actually see what I have subscribed to unless I've made it private. You can do that in blog lines too. I have yes, that. Yes, you can yeah. do that in blog lines. Now the the people you follow is a little different. The people this is when. Andrew shares something that he has found in Google Reader, I find out about it. This is not following Andrew's blog. If I wanted to, yes, if, if Andrew had a blog. Which is what she's asking about, two different things, yeah. following the blog or following something to follow. If, 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 if Andrew has a blog, I can follow his blog via RSS, and that would show up here under subscriptions. However, what's going to happen here under people you follow in Google Reader is only things that they have specifically shared. So let me, let me see if I can find a slightly better example here. Um, I'm going to go to, uh, we'll, we'll think the Hildreth Public Library is safe for public consumption. And I said, hey, they purchased an, an early literacy station. I think that's really cool. I can go here and say share. And if I click on share, I can unshare it. I can add a comment. Now, anybody who's following me in their Google Reader account will see that next to my name. So that, that isn't if they follow my blog. I would have to post that on my blog for them to actually see it that way. This is just something for people who are following me via Google Reader. I have a thing on, on my blog where I've, and I don't remember how I visited it a long time ago, via blog lines, it's a link to all to see every to see my public account. Yes. So if you're if you're on my blog, my website, I don't want to mm -hmm. show it or not. Um, um, it just uh, over to my if you want. Okay. Just it, say KristaJoy.blogspot.com. Not very special, but it's okay. That's fine. That's cool. And then. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you sure, we want it. Okay. It's okay. It's uh, about libraries. And if you go down the right side, I should have. Keep going. Um, Twitter, Flickr photos, delicious, no, random blog. reads. There we go. Browse the blog. Browse the blog. And there's my work blog role. It's about in the middle there. Up here. Just up. Okay. So this is what I've done. I have blog lines. And I've just put in the link for you. And you can see in the URL it says public. Yep. 
I've made mine public, and so this is where you can see all the stuff that I follow in my blog lines. And I've just put a link to it on my blog just to share that so people know. Um, mm -hmm. Here's some things that I follow professionally, and I put them into folders and things. Um, and, and, there's, stuff. and there's a similar feature in Google Reader. Um, I just don't remember how to get to it right off the top <laughs> of my head. Um, and so now notice this is only stuff that Krista has made public. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't show you what Krista has actually read in each of these things. It just shows you that she does subscribe to the Common Craft blog, and you can see what is in the Common Craft blog. But it doesn't tell you Krista has particularly read these items or yeah. not these items. No, um, so, no, they don't. They, um, they don't really have a share. Um, I found Google Readers a little more uh, has a little more of the social features mm -hmm. than Bloglines. It's kind of one of the reasons I moved over. Um, but as you'll notice, Bloglines looks kind of similar to Google yeah. Reader. It's it's the same general functionality to it. Um, we do have a comment suggestion. Anyway, um, when we do these um, Encompass lives, we have some of our staff here at the Library Commission are in a room downstairs also watching, <laughs> watching. us. Hi, guys. Um, Hi. And we have a uh, request from them that actually we have here in Nebraska a oh. uh, set of databases called Nebraska Access. And um, uh -huh. some of those databases that we subscribe to for our citizens do have that you can get RSS feeds of searches, just like what you were doing right. at PubMed, but PubMed. in our database in there. Um, Wilson and Books and Print are the two that they specifically uh -huh. mentioned. So um, you can subscribe to a feed for that search so you can be alerted, just like what um, Michael was showing you about the, yes. the Gout one. And, um, and, and they oh, this is and color me embarrassed. That you didn't use that because I have completely forgotten to mention our own feeds here at the Commission, uh -huh. which is even in my notes. Uh -huh. um, if we go here, we do offer feeds uh, from the Commission uh, podcast. Mm -hmm our blog, um, things like that. So actually, if you go to the commission homepage, in our case, we do it a little differently. Instead of copying the URL for this icon, you actually click on this icon, and then you have all of the feeds there that are available. So yes, that was I, I skipped right over that. I, 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 I am embarrassed, and I apologize. And, and uh, Chris, oh, Krista should have reminded me. Oh, yeah, my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really two different things. This is what yes. the commission puts out for our stuff, our mm -hmm. own content. And this comment was about databases. If you go back a page in our Nebraska Access, which is right up there, the second link, which is a set of databases that the state library that we pay for on behalf um, for Nebraska citizens to use. Mm -hmm. And um, in these, you can do that same kind of thing, use any of these databases. Well, Wilson and Books and Print was specifically mentioned mm -hmm. to get our feeds. And it says here as a comment, great for students who start the research early, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. if you have any of those students or mm -hmm. patrons who are coming in not the day before they want to know something, yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, an RSS feed is going to help you over the long run, yeah. not, in the, kind of not in the next 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the paper is due on Friday. Uh, your, your, your RSS not is not, not the best really going to start help your research. Yeah, exactly. yeah. so. Um, so that's really what I wanted to cover, including the thing I completely forgot. Um, <laughs> any other questions or uh, comments? Anybody have any questions? Um, oh, Julie does say to answer to her question, which is the previous one. That makes sense. Okay, good. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we could we could literally do probably easily a one-hour presentation just on how Google Reader works, or just on how blog lines works. Um, like I said, this is a really big, giant overview. Um, and uh, get you started. Get you know what it's all about. So now you can jump in with a little bit of knowledge. Yep. Um, of it. Do you have anything on your slide you want to pop back? Uh, I think very last slide, actually. I, I believe it or not, have some extra slides in here that due to time issues we are not going to get to, but that's okay. okay. You haven't, um, when you haven't the recording is put up and available, um, this PowerPoint will be available with along with it for you to go through all the slides, download it, whatever, um, and any of the links that he used and showed um, today we yes. will include as well. Mm -hmm. So you'll have um, quick links to all of those. And then so there, along with the Yep, and there is also on this particular slide a, a URL for some more bookmarks, which has probably about the last five years worth of bookmarks regarding RSS in it. So um, we, we will have a link specifically to the stuff we talked about today um, with the recording and on our website. But if you want to find pretty much like anything and everything Michael's ever bookmarked dealing with RSS, the, the URL is on your screen. Um, for, for if you're a newbie, it will probably be overkill. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the best way to start. Yeah. Okay. 
Right. And feel free to you know send me questions. There's my email address. Um, yeah. And I do still get email. I, I do accept that email has to be used. I just you know prefer RSS if available. And people can't RSS you. No, not really. No, you can't. <laughs> uh, that's true. That's true. RSS is pretty much a broadcast media, yes. not an interactive media. Um, okay. If there are any other questions, it looks like we've just gotten a few thank yous. Okay. Like Evan, said, so. Yeah, you're all welcome. Um, thank you very much for attending this week's um, Encompass Live. Um, I hope you'll join us next week when we are doing something that will be very specific to Nebraska libraries. I'll tell you that right now. Um, Nebraska Access, our database system that service that we were talking about earlier, um, have a couple of new things coming in there. Um, Books and Print has a new interface called Books and Print 2.0, and we have a whole new service, um, uh, Nonfiction Connection. And Alana Novotny, one of our librarians here at the Commission, will be talking about those two new things coming to, um, they're in Nebraska Access now. So that'll be next Wednesday. Great. Sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> so um, thank you very much, and we will see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye.